Hi. Okay, this is the third and final video for this lesson on map components. We're going to think about pages 8 and 9, so you should have printed or uh, opened those so you can look at them. So on, um, let's take a look at page 8. We see a map. It has a title, Washington State. We have a compass rose out um, to the right-hand side of the map. Notice it's pretty much straight up and down. This is a small enough portion of the globe that up means straight towards the North Pole. We also have a scale of miles, uh, which we'll use for one of the questions. Down in the bottom right and the bottom left, there is a map key. The key says a star means a state capital, a dot means a major city, and a little tree means a national park or monument. We also see on the map that we have some roads, right? Some roads. And the, the numbers of the roads are the interstate highway numbers of those roads. OK, now, we're not going to go through all of the questions here. I'm just going to give you some highlights and answers, all right? Mostly what I want you to see on this map is uh, I want to give you some key terms that often show up when we're talking about maps. Okay, so you can read this map, fairly easy to read, and answer the questions. Number nine, you'll find that the answer, the best answer is B, Mount Rainier National Park. Although it's a little hard to see whether it's Olympic National Park or Mount Rainier, the book says B, Mount Rainier. Number 10, which um, you'll be able to see that C is the right answer, that it's the Interstate 5 that connects all four major cities. We know the major cities because they have dots, according to the map key. Number 11 has a term that we might not be familiar with. The term is landlocked, landlocked. Something is landlocked if it's completely surrounded by land. No big lakes or oceans. All right. It doesn't necessarily mean rivers, but land that is not next to any oceans or really, really big lakes is landlocked. So um, uh, the um, it says based on the information in the map, which of the following best describes Washington? Obviously, it's not landlocked because the Pacific Ocean is on one side of it. Okay, but the correct answer for number 11 you'll find is D. Number 12 has two terms that we might not know. One is waterway and one is source. So a waterway means a river or a lake, anywhere that people could travel or cross um, by water is a waterway, a way to go by water. Okay. And uh, question B has the word source in it. The source of a river is where the river begins. Where the river begins is the source, the beginning of the river. It's where the river comes from. You know, the source of information would be where we got information from. So the source of a river is where the river begins or where it comes from. Where the river ends, where it goes into the ocean, or a lake or something, is the mouth of the river. The mouth where the water comes out, the mouth. What a funny thing, huh? OK, so with those definitions in mind, you should be able to find that the correct answer for 12 is D. And number 13, we're going to use our scale of miles to measure. And we'll find that B is the answer, the correct answer. And number 14, just by reading what's on the map, we'll find that D, Umatia National Forest, is the answer. All right? OK, let's go to page 8. Here we have a map. We have the title. Let's look for the components we're used to looking for. We have a title. It says Downtown Washington, D.C. We have a compass rose. It's in the lower left-hand corner. Notice this is a very small um, section of the globe of the world that's being uh, portrayed here. So the compass rose can point 
straight up and down. Um, we don't have, I don't see on here, a scale of miles on this map. It might be helpful if you're trying to figure out how far, if you're walking from one place to another. Um, I don't think I'm just missing it. I don't think there is one. But we do have a map key at the bottom, and we see that a small black box, small black square, designates a national monument. A square with an M is a metro station, and a square with a P is parking, a parking lot or a place to park. So the map key tells us those things. Now, I want you to notice that there's a paragraph to read here, but what we've talked about in class is a time strategy while we're taking a timed test is never to read anything if we don't have to. So we're not going to stop and read that paragraph when we come to it in the test. We're going to go straight to the questions. This is only true for the social studies test. We would use different strategies on the language arts test or the science test or the math test. But on the social studies test, we don't want to stop and read that if we're not going to have to read it. All right, so let's skip it and go to the questions first. And actually, you'll find that we can answer all of these questions without reading that paragraph in this case. All right? Again, we're not going to go over each of the questions. I'm going to um, just give you the answers to these questions. All right? Okay, number 15. If we look, this is a hard map to read. Stuff is small, but look for, look for the little P's that mean parking. Where do we see the most of them? They're around C, the National Mall. So C is the best answer there. Number 16, uh, we're going to look for where the metro stations are. Look for the little symbol that means a metro, metro station. We're going to find the White House on the map and then find which metro station is closest to the White House. And we'll find that B, the answer is B, um, the federal triangle. 17, which of these would be the most logical route for a walking tour? So if we're walking, there needs to be the, the places to visit that are closest together, not farthest apart. And if you look on the map, you'll find that one of the places in A, the FDR Memorial, is far away, not centralized here. In uh, B, one of these things, the Jefferson Memorial, is farther away, not centralized. C is the best answer because all of those things are closest to one another on the map. Um, okay. All right. And they're closer. Those places are closer than the place to one another than the places are that are listed in answer D. So C is the best answer there. And number 18, which site is farthest away from the World War II Memorial? Just find the World War II Memorial on the chart. Find each, I mean, on the map, find each of these on the map. Which one's farthest away? Okay, so D is the best answer there. All right, so let's take a, figure out what we want to take away from this lesson. We learned some important key concepts like longitude and latitude, elevation. Um, we learned the components that we generally look for, important components on the map that we can use, the um, compass rows, the scale of miles, um, the title if it's necessary, We've also reviewed the ideas that we don't want to stop and read paragraphs or passages until we know from reading the questions that we have to. And um, I think that's about it. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot for your time.